October 2023. Efficiency. Pointers for a productive life. Dr. Bijal Maru shares some hacks that can be used every day to ease stress and get the most out of life. What is your productivity quotient? Does time slip through your day as easily as sand slips through your hands? Does each day feel like being stuck in a maze, and does reaching the goal seem an uphill task? Trying to make sense of this problem, I studied the high productivity phases in my life. These were phases when I clearly enunciated my goals with their deadlines on paper. Funnily, I seem to perform better when I have a hectic schedule ahead and perform dismally when I have the luxury of a relaxed pace. If I go a step further and make it a do or die goal, then I have no option but to achieve it. There were two times in my life when I operated at the pinnacle of my productivity spectrum, the first time was when I did a course in counseling psychology, and the second was when I pursued a course in arts-based therapy while handling a full-time homeopathic practice. In both situations, the timetable for assignments made me set my own deadlines. I factored in a margin of a few days in case unforeseen delays hijacked my submissions. This helped me in good stead, and I performed so well that I finished at the top of the heap in both courses. I planned my days such that I used my travel time to read all course material. This helped me make the best use of my time and my busy schedules did not hinder the quality or the punctuality of my assignments. Let's deep dive into this and come up with some gems to build our productivity quotient. 1. Plan well. A. Prioritize your goals. Invest your time in what you care about. Knowing the destination makes the actionable steps very clear. It is important that you shift your goals from the abstract to the concrete. This will help you make your to-do list by eliminating the inessential while retaining the non-negotiable. As Laura Stack, an award-winning keynote speaker and best-selling author, says, spend as much time planning your time as you plan your money. Dwight D. Eisenhower, the 34th President of the United States, had to make tough decisions continuously about which of the many tasks he should focus on each day. This led him to invent the world-famous Eisenhower Matrix, which helps us prioritize our goals based on urgency and importance. These can be divided into four quadrants. Quadrant I, Urgent and Important, these are the activities which you need to do first. Quadrant II, Important but not Urgent, these activities need to find a place on your schedule. Quadrant 3, Urgent but Unimportant, these constitute jobs that you can delegate. Quadrant 4, Not Urgent and Unimportant, these make up the don't do at all list. Most of us spend time in Quadrant 3 and 4 and hence end up with an overpopulated Quadrant I. Thus, we are either firefighting or wasting our time. However, to climb the ladder of success, we need to focus on Quadrant 2 activities most of the time. As author and motivational speaker Tony Gaskins says, if you don't build your dream, someone will hire you to help build theirs. Hence, prioritize your goals. B. Bite only as much as you can chew below are the workshop details and interviews my to-do lists used to be very ambitious earlier with no consideration as to how long each task was going to take. This left me riddled with guilt at the end of each day. So, though I have an exhaustive to-do list now, I pick up only three items from this main list for my daily to do. Striking them off my list after completion truly gives me a sense of achievement and satisfaction. C. Bring in the momentum. If it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. Productivity consultant Brian Tracy defies the eat that frog method after this vivid piece of advice from Mark Twain. What he means by this is that we need to tackle the most important item first thing every morning. This is important to meet procrastination head on. The resultant high propels us further to complete all tasks on our daily to do. 2. Deal with the mundane. A. Plan ahead. Timothy Ferris, the American entrepreneur, author, 
and lifestyle guru has listed an amazing productivity hack in his book The 4-Hour Workweek. He suggests bunching things up. I use this trick for grocery shopping. I plan my meals for a week and prepare my shopping list based on this plan. I also add items to this list based on how other supplies run out and need restocking. Stuck under the fridge magnet, the list is readily accessible. This helps me to shop just once every week, saving time and effort. I also have an area-wise list so that I get all errands of a particular location done in one go. Ordering medicines, packaged groceries, and toiletries online not only saves time but also yields some pretty decent discounts. B. Club things together. I club listening to audiobooks with some. Gain knowledge or have fun while getting a much needed workout. Use your travel time and technology to catch up on emails and professional reading or to prepare presentations. 3. Avoid the online rabbit hole A. Focus. At work, consider being offline till you achieve your non-negotiable for the day. This gives you precious focus for high-quality output. B. Outsource. We inadvertently plummet down a rabbit hole every time we access social media. If being on social media is mandatory for your business, then outsource this job to professionals. Another solution would be to use a timer to exit the roller coaster. C. Don't waste time. Avoid mindless unwinding. Abstaining from television or OTT content saves me one to mundane tasks or with the exercise hour. I a workbook for greater efficiency inadvertently plummet down a rabbit hole every time we access social media. If being on social media is mandatory for your business, then outsource this job to professionals. Another solution would be to use a timer to exit the roller coaster. D. Switch off. I make it a point to switch off all devices at least an hour before I retire. This ensures good sleep and a head start to the next day. 4. Make lifestyle choices. A. Go minimalistic. Cleaning up my photo albums made me give up my DSLR. We need to overcome FOMO and trust the brain to store worthwhile memories. Now, I try to limit photography and just savor the moment. Extending this logic, I have ruthlessly cut down on my possessions. This saves time cleaning the house and clears mind space as well. B. Keep it basic. Decide your clothes and shoes for the week and repeat them week after week so that you can spare the time and decision-making capacity for more important things. British podcaster and author, Jay Shetty shares this tip in his book Think Like a Monk. He says that many bigwigs like Steve Jobs, Barack Obama, and Ariana Huffington, co-founder of the famed Huffington Post, are known to have their own basic uniform. Keeping hair short or adopting a low-maintenance hairdo can be a huge time-saving hack. Women athletes often adopt this approach to focus more on their game. C. Do your own thing. We end up investing a lot of time pursuing hobbies just to tag along with others. Indulge only in those pastimes that bring joy to you. D. Sleep well. Peter Mulraney, an Australian creative writer and thinker throws light on the adverse effects of sleep deprivation in his book Everyday Productivity. Poor sleep results in reduced alertness and concentration, short attention span, slow reaction time, poor judgment, reduced efficiency, crankiness, bad temper, and loss of motivation. Hence, it mars productivity. E. Balance your life. Mulraney also highlights how you cannot keep home life and work life segregated in two separate boxes. A great family life keeps you happy and peaceful, and improves performance at work. Cultivating a work-life balance helps curb resentment at home that workaholics rake up. F. Reduce monetary worries. Reducing the use of credit cards curtails you from inadvertently spending more than you can afford. It will provide you with enough money in hand for your non-negotiable expenses such as house rent or low namies and paying bills. Eliminating monetary worries frees up mind space for work. G. Be healthy. A feeling of well-being boosts performance. 
too many late nights and indulging in drugs, or drinks mess with your brain chemistry. The feel-good endorphins released during exercise pump up performance. H. Schedule downtime, family time, meditation, reading, music, spending time in nature, and creative pursuits help us rejuvenate, and we go back to work, raring to go. 5. Self-awareness. A. Do things within your circle of influence Stephen Covey of the 7 Habits of Highly Effective People fame, talks about the circle of concern which includes all the things that are a cause for concern in our life, right from the state of the economy, the weather, the political scenario, our health, our target goals, and our relationship with our family. On close examination, this list reveals many things that do not fall within our purview of control. For example, the state of the economy. Now, most of us waste a lot of time feeling upset and complaining about these things. This leaves no time to focus on the things we can really exercise control over, for example, our goals. He calls this the circle of influence. The real deal is that achievements happen when we complete tasks that fall within this ambit. B. Develop the right attitude. To quote Peter Mulraney, it's a lot easier for most of us to change our minds than it is to change our jobs. Identify aspects of work that you appreciate and focus on that. We can work to contribute, to get things done, to help, to take up responsibility and to make a difference. Employ a can-do attitude as this opens your mind to new ways of doing things. If there is nothing good about your job, start looking for another one. American author and motivational speaker Zig Ziglar says it best, it's your attitude, not your aptitude that will determine your altitude. C. Do things in your unique style. Laura Stack advises, figure out what time of the day you work the best. Schedule critical tasks for that period. It's important not to give yourself grief about these choices as long as the job gets done. I prefer to write using the age old technique of putting pen to paper. I realize that I think better while holding my pen in my hand. Ruskin Bond being a tech dinosaur swears by his faithful pen and paper to dish out. His entertaining stories. Others may be better off using apps on their phone or making notes on their laptop. D. Be a quick decision maker. List the pros and cons on a sheet of paper. Thoughts seem clearer when written on paper instead of being deciphered while still in your mind. This exercise frees up mind space for decisions to be made very swiftly. Once they are made, stick with them and do not revisit them unless doing so is life-altering. E. Sharpen the axe. This is habit number 7 in best-selling author Stephen Covey's The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People. He talks about how successful people take time to sharpen the saw. This involves renewing oneself on the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual dimensions to enhance who we are as a person. The most powerful investment is investment in the self, and the most ignored area happens to be spiritual rejuvenation. It is important to take on something like a daily meditation, prayer, chanting, or gratitude practice. An abundance mindset that focuses on a win-win for all leads to astronomical success in our life. The quote by famous German philosopher, Arthur Schopenhauer, Ordinary people think merely of spending time, great people think of using it, hits the nail on the head. Dr. B. Jill Maru is an art-based therapy practitioner, homeopathic consultant, counseling and health psychologist since 20 years. She reflect on life through her gifts as a writer, poet and singer. Contact Trabish Jalmaru at redifmail.com or visit www.trabijalmaru.com.